Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The latest on the coronavirus outbreak here in San Antonio and around the country. Margaret Berger is live with more details. And a woman found dead on the northeast side of town. How police say she was knocked off her feet early this morning. And outside with live cam, a little drizzle this morning. We're in for kind of a strange weather day. Good morning, I'm David Sears. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Sunday. A little dreary. Well, <laughs> where you are, the temperature is not going to change a lot. But from north to south, there's a wide range of temperatures. It's a little different. That's yeah. exactly right, guys. And that's all because we are seeing a front stall out near San Antonio. So south of San Antonio today, it'll be substantially warmer than those in the hill country. Let's take a look outside right now. Gray, 71 degrees and east wind at about five miles per hour. We've been coasting at about 71 degrees since two o'clock in the morning. On top of that, we do have some areas where we're seeing light sprinkles at the moment. Notice out near Seguin, some quick splash and dash showers and in some places around Bear County, that's a similar story as well. Let's go ahead and zoom on in a little bit into parts of uh, southern Bear County, and you'll notice uh, again that right near uh, 181, right on the Bear County and Wilson County line, there's a really quick shower right there. We'll zoom in. Let's see if it'll work. Sometimes these computers are a little slow. There we go. All right. So right around Calaveras Lake uh, near Elmendorf, there's a shower going on at the moment. Here's a look at where that front is. Uh, it's 71 in San Antonio, but look up in New Braunfels, 65 degrees, 10 degrees cooler than in San Antonio up in Austin, uh, 10 degrees cooler nearly in Kerrville as well. So this front again will stall out and it'll result in very different temperatures. South of San Antonio, highs near the 80s, up in the hill country, highs staying in the 60s in the afternoon. So we're pretty much going to cruise right in the low to mid 70s around San Antonio today. Cloudy with areas of sprinkles and just a few isolated showers as I just showed you on the weather map. East northeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour and then storms will develop west near Del Rio late tonight close to midnight. I'll be back to talk about whether or not the storms will make it to San Antonio and uh, we'll take a look into the week ahead where we have rain chances just about every day. David. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. A cruise ship passenger quarantined at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland has tested positive for COVID-19. A federal spokesman says this is the only case so far among the 149 passengers. Our Garrett Barrington is live with the latest. Now, Garrett, what do we know about the case? Well, at this point, not much. All we know is that they've been sent to a Texas healthcare facility. Not this is the 12th case out of the Lackland quarantine to date. Two previous groups have already passed through JBSA Lackland's quarantine at the base, a flight out of Wuhan and another from the Diamond Princess cruise ship. 11 people out of those two groups had tested positive. At least three of them have recovered and been released. It's not clear where this new patient is from originally, but earlier this week, the mayor had announced that only Texans would be quarantined for longer than 72 hours on the base, while evacuees from other states would be sent to continue their quarantines closer to their homes. And a spokesman for Greg Abbott has also said the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services had assured the governor that non-Texans would not be sent to state or local facilities, so that those facilities would be available for Texans. Now, Lackland is one of four military installations where evacuees from the cruise ship have been staying at this point, but that their number could depend on their health and whether or not their home states allow them to come back. Federal spokesman had said that some states are allowing the evacuees to return back to continue their quarantines at home. Other states are requiring a negative test for COVID-19 first, and others want them to stay on the DOD installations for the full 14-day quarantine. Live downtown, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Also happening here in the Alamo City, the Metropolitan Health District confirmed a second travel-related case of coronavirus here in San Antonio. It has been confirmed that the patient is being treated at Methodist Hospital. We're also told the patient, who does have a history of underlying health conditions, tested positive following a visit to Japan. He is not connected to any of the groups of cruise ship evacuees. And a reminder for you, travel-related infection is not the same as community spread, meaning the virus was not transferred within San Antonio.
And local health officials are reporting a person that tested positive for COVID-19 here at home came in contact with a private school and daycare on the north side of town. Now, these local health officials believe the risk of exposure to students and staff remain low, but they are directing parents to monitor for symptoms. Founders of the Pineapple School's North Central Campus on Hebner Road told parents in a letter that they were notified of the encounter by local health officials on March 13th. The encounter happened on March 6th, according to school officials. And another reminder for you, places of worship closing their doors this morning. While they can be exempt from the public health declaration, many local churches are still canceling services out of caution. Among the list, the Archdiocese of San Antonio has canceled all Catholic public masses in parishes today. The pastor at River City Community Church says people should still lean on their faith as they move forward. It will be up to pastors to decide if they will continue with small group services. The Archdiocese did make it clear funeral services will still be held with regard to congregation size. And HEB is now closing all stores early as of today to allow time to restock shelves. Officials there, along with the Centers for Disease Control, say you do not need to stock up or panic. Now, all stores will open at 8 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. The new hours going into effect for Central Market, HEB pharmacies, Jovi's, and Mi Tienda locations. There's no date on when the regular hours will return. Again, this is only necessary because shoppers are clearing shelves, is what HEB spokespeople are saying, and causing long lines, prompting the need for HEB to put purchase limits on certain items. If the new hours at HEB wasn't enough, Walmart decided to follow their footsteps in closing early as well. The chain says the new hours will be from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. to also give employees time to restock the shelves. The stores have been stocking up on food, medicine, and other supplies. Grocery stores like Publix, Giant Stop, and Shop are participating in similar schedules, and some retailers that don't sell food are even adjusting amid the crisis. And while we monitor the latest on the virus here at home, other countries around the world are taking drastic measures. ABC's Julia McFarlane shows how Spain and France are now locking down their citizens and shutting down some of their most famous attractions. Overnight, chaos at Chicago's O'Hare Airport as passengers return home from Europe. Thousands of travelers left standing in a crowd for hours, shoulder to shoulder, waiting to be processed through new enhanced COVID-19 screenings. Through customs and then another line to uh, uh, CDC where I had my temperature taken. Calling the crowds unacceptable, the governor of Illinois slammed President Trump and Vice President Pence, tweeting, you need to do something now. Starting at midnight tonight, the U.S. is banning travel from the United Kingdom and Ireland. The number of travel-restricted countries in Europe rising to 28. Again, Americans in the U.K. or Ireland can come home. Legal residents can come home, but as the secretary will detail, uh, they will be funneled through specific airports and process. This increased travel ban comes as most of Europe, now defined as a hot zone, goes on lockdown. Spain ordering 47 million residents to stay at home for at least 15 days. The wife of Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, along with two Spanish officials, testing positive for the virus. In France, popular restaurants, bars and theatres are shut down. Reports claiming roughly 300 patients in critical condition, nearly half under the age of 50. In Italy... For the most part, Italy is in a ghost town. There is nobody outside in downtown Rome in any of the major monuments. The Trevi Fountain, the Spanish Steps, absolutely empty. Only grocery stores, pharmacies and banks are open. Cases of COVID-19 in the country saw its biggest daily increase yet. And with the death toll now rising to more than 1,400, authorities are pointing to irresponsible behaviour by residents still socialising despite the lockdown. The UK and Ireland now added to that new travel ban. Americans coming home from here will not be affected, but they will have to quarantine for two weeks when they get home. These details covered in a phone call between President Trump and Prime Minister Boris Johnson last night. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. The coronavirus is a topic we are following very closely here at KSAT. If you would like more information on the latest city updates, case numbers, and our city closures, 
You can head over to our website at kset.com slash topic slash coronavirus. And remember, when adults panic, kids panic. That's why we're also encouraging parents, teachers, and students to check out the KSET Kids newsletter to learn how to keep calm children's fears about the coronavirus. Not only that, KSET has also provided links to help kids learn best hand washing practices and how to take advantage of time away from school, like trying out one of meteorologist Katie Blake's science experiments. Now you can sign up for our KSET Kids newsletter anytime at ksat.com slash newsletters. And new this morning, a woman is dead after being hit by a driver of a vehicle on the northeast side of town. Police say that woman was walking down the I-35 frontage road near Wiedner around 3 a.m. when she was hit by that driver. That driver did not stop and render aid. Now, police say a bystander saw the woman and called police immediately. EMS tried to revive her, but she was pronounced dead at the scene. Police have no description of that vehicle.